Hey everyone, this is The Real Mr. Robinson, and I'm here to bring you a special review for the Beatles movie, A Hard Day's Night. Now, the reason why this review is actually special is because it was filmed, or recorded, I should say, in the summer of 2012. Now, let me explain. Um, back then, I was at UC Santa Cruz taking some summer classes, and... I was in a Beatles course with a friend of mine who also was a film major and we watched the movie. I was destined to review as many movies as I could and I asked her, hey, do you want to review Hard Day's Night with me? And she said, yeah, let's do it. So we recorded it and the first recording, the audio went out of sync with the video completely. And at the time, I really was new to editing with iMovies, so I didn't know what I was doing. So. I scrapped that version and told her, hey, um, we got to do it again. The audio went out of sync, so we got to do it again. That's why um, her shirt is different in the actual review and the intro, which is available on my old channel, Alex G 462 And that intro is the only piece of the original recording that was saved. But just recently, like yesterday, I found the raw audio. Like, I just found the raw audio from that original recording, so I figured, you know what? It'd be cool to put this up for you to enjoy. And keep in mind, I was still kind of new to this, reviewing movies on YouTube, but I think uh, having an additional person really helped. And again, this is completely audio. There's no video. I'll just show the poster, but there's not going to be any video. But I hope you guys enjoy it, and um, my friend does have a YouTube channel. It's relatively small. She started it uh, a few months ago called The Real Sandwich. So check it out. Um, give her a shout out and tell you the real Mr. Robinson sent you. So with that being said, here's the original audio review for A Hard Day's Night. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, I'm not going to do that whole voice throughout this review because I can't... I don't think I can do it for a certain amount of time. Can't even do, like, a British accent? I can, just not for... not in the Beatles way the whole time. But anyway, um, I'm... this is for A uh, Hard Day's Night, and I'm joined by... Um, Sandwich, also known as The Real Sandwich, on YouTube. <laughs> Alright, well, thanks for... thanks for telling us that. And here's a promotion right here. <laughs> Um, so, um, the, um, uh, if you don't know who the Beatles are, then, um, I think you might be living in a cave, or, or I don't know how you're even watching this if you're in a cave, but, um, the Beatles were a, the mo probably the most talented music group out there. They were from, Lon they were from, I think, I forget the play, Liverpool. Liverpool, they're from, thank you. See, we're taking, we're, the thing is we're taking a class on Beatles and we're doing everything, we're covering their music, lives, and film, and since I'm doing reviews, I think it's best to talk about, to actually just review anything movie I see, and I, luckily I have you here to correct me on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or help you remember things. Yeah, and just feel free to talk, just feel free to jump in. Oh, I think so the anyway, they're a musical group from Liverpool who um basically they were the best thing to ever happen to music. They were influential, they changed um the face of rock and roll. And um yeah, they can I think they continue to influence people today despite having broken up forty something years ago. Yeah, even today, people who aren't even around when the Beatles were alive were still walking around wearing Beatles t-shirts and buying Beatles merchandise. I mean, they're gaining all these royalties years after they broke up. Yeah, too bad I don't have a Beatles shirt with me, and I just realized it's my shirt's inside out, but <laughs> forget about that. So anyway, their first film, uh, A Hard Day's Night, is based off their album, A Hard Day's Night. Huh? And it was made in 64, I believe. Yeah. Okay. It was directed by Richard Lester, who, if you're a geek out there, you might recognize him as um, the director of Superman 2 and the unfortunate Superman 3. I didn't know that there was more than that. <laughs> you didn't know there was more than one Superman movie? No. 
To be honest, I I'm, I'm don't know that much about the DC universe, other than like, you know, all the hype they get for Batman. I'm with you too. I'm more of a Marvel guy, but this is not about comics, this is about the Beatles. Hmm? <laughs> um, so, basically this is like a mockumentary about their life, huh? pretty yeah. much. There's no, there's no real plot, it's just... Or in other words, like a pop musical, as they put it, which originally a lot of the people who worked on the movie weren't really interested in doing a pop musical, but they were convinced by the Beatles' charisma and their charm to go ahead and go through with the movie. And the Beatles, for a really long time, did not want to do a movie because, you know, they'd seen the other pop stars who had movies come out and they were terrible, like Elvis Presley's movie, for oh, example. Oh, yeah. And, and if I may um, go off course a little bit, Pat Boone. Huh? Yeah. Because um, I recently saw, um, he did a movie, Journey to the Center of the Earth, which was atrocious. <laughs> I did not like that movie either. No, and don't worry, I'll get to that someday. And the Superman movies. Anything I mentioned I haven't reviewed, I'll get to them. So just hang on tight. But so what caused them to get, what actually caused everyone to get into this, to part of this project? Huh? Well, just because, I think because it was a way to just expose the Beatles more. Well, it wasn't like they planned to expose the Beatles more, although, in a sense, you know, they kind of knew, like, that would happen for the most part. I mean, you know, like I said, a lot of them weren't really interested in working on the project at first, but then they decided to go ahead and get into it. And, of course, it ended up taking the Beatles from being just a sensation in London and Liverpool into an international sensation. So, that was definitely... It did expose them greatly, the fact that they made this movie, but at the same time, you know, I don't think they were really focused on turning them into an international sensation when they made it. Right. Your voice is starting to crack a bit. Oh, I still, I, I haven't been up very long. Okay. <laughs> so you can probably tell right now who's paying more attention in class, huh? I sit in the front row, so... <laughs> Alright, well I should probably move up then. <laughs> so anyway, um... Like you, you I, like it's basically a mockumentary, uh, and um, um, it's really I it's yeah I I blacked out for a second I really did black out um it's well it's really funny yeah um it's has that dry British humor which I on it which makes me jealous because they're the Brits always seem funnier than us huh well it. it Mostly, I mean, it has the Beatles humor. I mean, they have their their own sense of humor, their own charm, and what they wanted to do was when they were creating the script, they wanted to make it as close as possible to things that, you know, you would typically hear, like, the Beatles say. You know, for example, they wanted to kind of... And not only did they want to bring through the things that the Beatles might naturally say, but they wanted to kind of bring them out as individuals, you know, show them for their individual uh, personalities aside from how, because it's hard to represent them when you're going through group interviews all the time, you know, it's hard to see like what each person was like, so they kind of, you know, Paul was the cute one, John Lennon is the cynic, uh, Ringo they did is the sad and unloved one, and George was the quiet one, who was sometimes pretty mean. Hmm, so I'm... Uh, so around other people, I guess I'm the George minus the qu minus the meanness. Huh? Probably, yeah. <laughs> okay, but you um, uh, moving on. Um, so if I'm cor if I remember correctly, um, the other characters in the movie are the aren't actual. They aren't playing actual people. Like um, no. Hang on, I got notes. Let me see the like um. Paul McCartney's grandfather is in it. Uh, sorry, I'm not. I have glasses on. I just choose not to do it. Um, gr uh, Paul McCartney's grandfather is played by Wilfred Brambell. Uh, yeah, who was a uh, famous British actor. Like all the other actors in the movie, tended to be uh, famous actors in you know London too. So that you know when Americans saw it we we only knew the Beatles so that was the only thing that we really understood when there was something funny there 
<laughs> but like, everybody who saw it over in London, you know, they got a lot more jokes out of it because they're like, they knew all these other people. For example, there was a lady who was a really well-known Shakespearean actor, actress, and then you had, you know, um, what is his name, Wilfred Bram Brambell? Brambell? Yes, Wilfred Brambell. Yeah, then you have him, and then you had... Um, the guys who played um, Norman Shake. Um, I don't think they were... There was there was another guy, the guy who did uh, the play, who was in the play part of the movie. You know when they're doing the actual play in the studio. I think so. Yeah, that that guy was famous for something too. But you know the overall point is that you know they got a lot more humor out of it than we did because you had these other famous um, you know people from London playing other characters like Paul's grandfather. You see, as, as you're saying all of this right now, um, everyone who's watching is opening another tab and looking up these people. Because <laughs> I, I doubt most of my audience, if I have any at this point, are, um, were alive back then. So they're, just, they're, they're looking it up right now. We never know. There's some people out there who love the Beatles and know a lot about the Beatles. For example, our friend Patrick just so happens to know a lot about the Beatles, and he wasn't around when they yeah, were. Yeah, he, he's not even part of the class, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, um, one little thing I picked up whenever they played the music, and I don't know if you picked up in this too, is that the, like, tone of the audio would, like, change, you know? Like, like when music, okay, well, for example, like, when they start playing um, A Hard Day's Night, I believe, some point in the movie, it seems like it's in stereo, or it's like remastered, and the rest of the movie's audio is like mono. Oh, I think I kind of see what you're saying. Like, it seems like the music was possibly pre-recorded, and that they're just playing over the scenes. Or they possibly could have um, like remastered for the DVD. Yeah. So that could that could have been the case. I don't think I think it was probably that everything was the same when the movie came out. I'm pretty sure. That you're right. That does it. That's what they did. I think our professor mentioned something about that. How, you know, they they perform the songs, but when you put the movie together, that they just you know put the song over it so that it kind of sounds louder and better on the movie. Yeah, it pretty much. And um, this movie would, um, I believe, it went on to. No, I don't believe I. It has become influential in the sense of influencing other. Like you say, pop musical movies. Huh? Yeah. Like um, uh, though it's not as though it's nowhere as good. Um, I believe Michael Jackson's Moonwalker would be considered that. Have you ever seen? Uh -huh. yeah. Do you have you even heard of its existence? Yeah, I've heard of its ex okay. existence, but I've never <laughs> seen it. Okay. Well, I heard it's not that good, except um, a smooth criminal music video. <laughs> but um, other than that, I can't think of any. Other pop. Well, for the most part, the film wasn't just influential on you know other films that they would do for pop stars, but it was also influential on how films are made in general because Richard Lester had such creativity and imagination when he was making his films that it was said that his film influenced many other films because of the style in which he filmed it. Right, mm -hmm. and um. It, it just felt like even though it's a mockumentary of their life, it it um it must have it must kind of been like they were like chained. It's almost like they were like chained up by their um what's called their agents, and they're like always on the run from their fans. That it would be pretty chaotic. Well, yeah. I'm sure other I'm sure music, um like other bands today experience the same thing. Huh? Well, not nearly not, as much as not the to, no, story. not to obviously not to the same degree because yeah. no, nobody can. I don't care if it's. I don't care if like years from now there's some band that comes out that's so influential. Like by the time we're both dead, that I don't. I doubt they're gonna be up there with the Beatles. Yeah, the film definitely plays on what they did in the film was they wanted to also play on those things. Like for example, two scenes for example is in the very beginning of Hard Day's Night, they have, um, they're getting off the train and there's a bunch of fans there waiting for them and what they do is they trick the fans by, they go th into one car but then they go out of that car and into another car to trick the fans. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then another scene which plays on the agents is later on in the film, they're walking through the studio 
and George sees the, like an exit door and they run out and they're like, we're free. And they go run and play out in the field, you know, kind of away from all that, you know, media you have, you know, all these fans, all these agents, all these people wanting them around. It kind of shows them just kind of being silly on their own and being goofballs out in the field. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I noticed we're, mark, we're closing on the 15 minute mark, which is the limit you want. You want to take a you want to just stop recording and then put up a part two or do you have anything else to add? Um, if there was anything else you wanted to mention about the film, we could. Uh, I don't believe there is, but um, I guess I'll I guess I'll put in my traditional rating. Um, it's out of like so many of these types of movies I've seen. This is the best one I've seen. I think the ultimate best. So I think it's an obvious five stars. And, yeah, definitely. And um, so, yeah, um, if you guys out there have anything you wish to add, let me know in the com- Let us know in the comments, and um, don't forget to subscribe. And would you, you would you like to keep doing some more reviews in the future? Sure. Okay, so you'll get to see you'll get to see Sam right here help me with more films. So until then. Um, this is Alex G eight four six two, and this is the real sandwich. <laughs> and we'll and I'll we'll see you in the next review. Bye.